Hi, my name is Brad Feld. I'm a partner in a venture capital firm called Foundry Group based in Boulder, Colorado. We invest in early stage software and internet companies all around the U.S. Today I'd like to talk to you about one of my four uh, principles of entrepreneurial communities. Uh, first, let me just state them so you have them. Uh, the first is that entrepreneurial communities need to be led by entrepreneurs. The second is that these leaders need to take a 20-year view from today to build a sustainable entrepreneurial community. Next is that they need activities in their entrepreneurial community that engage the entire entrepreneurial stack. And the fourth is that uh, the entrepreneurial community needs to continually get fresh blood into the system. Uh, let me focus briefly on the first of these, which is that entrepreneurial communities need to be led by entrepreneurs. Um, entrepreneurial communities fundamentally have what I call leaders and feeders. Uh, the feeders include everyone that are inputs into the entrepreneurial community. Specifically, this includes lawyers, accountants, uh, angel investors, venture capital investors, uh, government, and anybody else that is participating in the development of the entrepreneurial community, but not leading it. The leaders have to be the entrepreneurs. Now, you don't need a lot of entrepreneurs to lead an entrepreneurial community to make a difference. Uh, in Boulder, which is a town of uh, 100,000 people proper, quarter of a million people sort of in the metro, I would say there's probably somewhere between a half a dozen and a dozen key leaders in the entrepreneurial community. But these, on, these are entrepreneurs. These are the, actually the people creating companies who have also taken it upon themselves to make sure that they're actively engaged in creating a long-term robust entrepreneurial community. The key is that they have to make a commitment for at least 20 years from now, not 20 years from some point in the future 10 or 15 years ago. But they have to look at it from the standpoint of we're going to be creating something and building something over a long period of time with the goal of making it sustainable. Um, those leaders have to be committed to the area, the city or town that they live in. They have to be committed to the process of leading the entrepreneurial community. And they have to recognize that it's a long-term process rather than a short-term two or four or six year experience. Now, all of the feeders in the entrepreneurial community have a role. Uh, the problem comes when some of the feeders try to become leaders or when a particular class of feeder decides that it's the leader. Um, and this most notably happens with government, where government tries to become the leader of the entrepreneurial community or government takes upon, state or local government takes upon itself as the mission uh, to create an entrepreneurial community. I would say most of the uh, inputs in terms of lawyers, accountants, investors, etc., recognize pretty clearly that their inputs into the entrepreneurial community and that they exist in support of the entrepreneurs. But oftentimes you see uh, this phenomenon with government where uh, people in government, whether it's economic development or a governor or mayor of a city, decides we're going to turn the city into a great economic engine from an entrepreneurial perspective and tries to put the force of government behind it rather than focus on what they should be doing, which is feeding into the system and enabling the entrepreneurial leadership. There's a couple of fundamental reasons why it doesn't work when government becomes a leader instead of a feeder. One is the rhythm's totally wrong. Uh, you're dealing with, in government, you know, two to four year cycles typically. Granted, you have some people who are staffers for a long period of time and have, you know, sort of, again, economic development or staff roles. But the leadership in government tends to be on a much more focused four year cycle. And I'm talking about 20 years here. You know, if, if from this point forward you don't have a 20 year view uh, around developing your entrepreneur community, I think your chance of success is much lower. Next is the personality is wrong. Um, you have this phenomena of leadership versus support. And I recognize that sort of the top levels of government, you have uh, this, this view of leadership. But sort of throughout the implementation, you tend to have people who are much more effective at support roles and specifically doing things that are enabling uh, or following some sort of set of behaviors or parameters that somebody else laid out rather than providing true leadership. Um, so the personalities are just wrong in terms of leadership versus support. Finally, the incentives are wrong. Um, most people in government have a job, and they have a job to do, and they're focused on doing their job. And if their job is to create an entrepreneurial community, job, um, it, it's not clear that that's what's going to motivate 
entrepreneurs to really engage with each other and engage with the community. In fact, what you tend to see is entrepreneurs who are already incredibly good at and comfortable with the notion of leading end up becoming fantastic leaders in that dynamic and view it as a creative act uh, in their community. This sort of idea that they can help create something um, around an entrepreneurial community over a long period of time. So essentially, the reason that government sort of falls down in this, in this concept is the rhythm is wrong, personality is wrong, and the incentives are wrong. Um, sometimes you see uh, short-term success when local government co-ops entrepreneurial activity. There's a lot of noise around it. There's a lot of stuff in the papers. There's a lot of people talking about it. There might be some financial incentives um, that are positive things like uh, tax credits for angel investors at a state level. Um, but it doesn't sustain over a long period of time. Um, in, and it doesn't sustain because of those reasons, um, and, and frankly, primarily because of this rhythm issue where it's more of a short-term cyclical phenomena rather than something that just really has to build over a long period of time. Um, I would encourage everybody in the room to think hard about this dynamic from the standpoint of who are your entrepreneurial leaders that are committed for 20 years uh, for your organization rather than, or for your, for your city, rather than thinking about, okay, what do I do in the next 12 months and what do I do to make progress? Um, if you're a feeder, whatever category of feeder you are, that's good. Make sure you identify those entrepreneurial leaders. Make sure you encourage them and make sure you support them. But let the entrepreneurs be the leaders. And frankly, great entrepreneurs are going to be the leaders whether you let them or not. So recognize that the leaders of the entrepreneurial community have to be the ones that are turbocharging it. And if you look around and you don't see uh, enough critical mass of leaders in your entrepreneurial community, that's a problem. And what you should be focusing on doing is identifying and encouraging the next wave of those leaders uh, to step up and be engaged. Uh, thanks. My email address is brad at feld.com. If you have any comments on what I just said or any questions or follow-up, happy to hear it.